Welcome back to part two of an interview with Mark Lajakino, former graduate of Global Financial Training and highly successful commercial finance entrepreneur. If you have not heard part one, I encourage you to do so next. Phil in his training talks about probably about 20 or 30 different types of loans. What's your favorite loan? Well, what's your most common loan? Two most common loans are the SBA, Small Business Administration, funded by our wonderful government. Um, it's a great program, great rates, great, great uh, process. Um, it, it's a, it, you know, in some cases we tell our clients, look, we're, we're going to cause temporary brain damage because of the amount of work we'll put them through, but it's worth it every time. It's a great loan, great system. Um, it's, it's, I would say, probably 40% of my uh, funding to date. The other loan that I like, or I shouldn't call it a loan, the other program I like the most, or funding system, is something uh, known as credit card aggregation. Long story short, we're able to obtain multiple credit cards for a client that will total anywhere from 50000 as far as, as up to 300000 and they all come with some form of 0% introductory offer interest rates. So it's common for me to be able to get a client $100,000, $150,000 in a few weeks, and that is at 0% interest for up to two years. So those are, those are very common, very popular, uh, very easy to obtain. Uh, and the client typically has to have something of a 670 credit score or better. And, and those are my two most popular. And then, of course, on the commercial real estate side, um, I do also work with a lot of SBA 504 loans, which is, again, your small business administration. What was your overall impression of Phil's training? I know that you said a minute ago that you were very happy because you walked out of the training ready to get into business, do you have any other impressions you would want to share? Well, it's it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. Phil does a great job of, you know, over a four-day period, um, he does a great job of making sure that you're not completely inundated uh, with the information. So he breaks it up very nicely. He introduces the lenders either personally in the meeting or over the wire. Um, and so it, it was, even though we were getting a ton of information at one time, uh, it was not just consistent, but it was constructed so that you, you could physically and mentally digest it each day as you move forward. So he's, he's, he's very good at that. And I think the other thing that people may or may not know about Phil, but I don't think there's a more patient man on this planet. Um, I honestly don't know how he did it when I started out. Uh, the first 90 days, I think I was calling him minimum three times a day. I'm three hours different from him, and he never missed a single phone call or email uh, it, it, throughout my transactions in that 90 days. After 90 days, it became repetitive enough for me to understand what to do, where to go, and who to seek. But the first 90 days, it, it really required Phil and uh, like I said, I, I don't know where he found that patience, but he was very gentle and always there and always had the right directive for me. How were the lenders that you met? Lenders are great. They're all, I call them my cast of characters. Um, each one is like anything in business. They all have their own personalities, their own way of doing business. Uh, I found it very refreshing that all of them are up to speed and up to par on licensing requirements and laws and legalities. Um, I never found myself in any kind of strange situation where, you know, I was bending the lending laws or anything of that nature. They always just advised me correctly and m navigated me through their system um, with 100% accuracy. And especially in my first deals, uh, it was very difficult for me because I really didn't know the next step, so to speak. So I was always walking blind. But Ed's, or, I'm sorry, Phil's lenders 
were just extremely instrumental in getting me through that process. And to this day, uh, because of that, because of their ability to instruct me in the beginning, today they're my number one lenders in each category. Um, even though I've brought on other lenders, the ones that Phil brought to me that I built initial relationships with, to this day, are still my number one lenders. How about marketing? Uh, did, did you find his marketing advice and guidance? Can you tell me your reaction you know, to that. It was spot on. I mean, again, Phil really pushed me, and I, I come from high tech. I come from marketing high tech, but it's entirely different. It was internet. I, my day consisted of pressing the send receive button on my email and counting how many leads came in. You never left the building. You never met people. Um, in this business, Phil taught me that referral groups are critical. Um, he didn't push me on it, but he made some really good suggestions. I tried them out when I came out here, and one group led to another, which led to another. And eventually, um, in this area, I'm known as the marketing ninja of the Bay Area, or I've been called um, the I'm running for mayor. There's a whole lot of things that people explain me or about me to others because I'm so involved in all the different groups here. So Phil kind of lit the, lit the fire, but I, I, I turned it into a complete furnace, and it's 100% the way that I do all of my marketing. How has this business affected your life? Well, it's allowed me to maintain my lifestyle, which was always what I would consider uh, high, upper class, if you will. This has allowed me to maintain the lifestyle that I'm accustomed to um, and not have to dive into any of my savings or investments or anything of that nature. And at the same time, now, here we are a year and some odd months later, I'm putting money into savings and, and, and just growing, growing my little empire, if you will. I love it. Is there any advice that you would give to somebody considering taking Phil's program? Tons of advice in that, in that area. First thing I would do, and I did, I would have a couple conversations with Phil. Um, if you don't like his style, if you don't like what he's saying, don't join, because this program mirrored Phil. I happen to have gravitated to it. I really love Phil, and I like his style, and I like the way he operates, and I love the fact that everything he told me was 110% right on the mark. So that's the first thing I would do is no Phil before I did anything. The second thing I would do is make sure that I understand that this is, this is not sit back do some internet marketing and your leads will pour in and you're going to be closing deals. This is what I would consider, you know, warfare. Going into banks, put your suit and tie on, have your business card, have your flyer, have your website up, walk in, present, get a coffee meeting, follow up on it. It's just brute force marketing. Um, if you're going to make phone calls, phone call smart. Get on the web, look for uh, equipment dealerships that sell or lease equipment. Find out who the manager is. Tell them that you can do the turndowns. So, you know, there's, it's a lot of hard work. Don't kid yourself if you think this is some get rich or uh, I can do this on the side type of scenario. It is, it, this is, if you run it like a business and you're a business person, then you have to take it seriously and give it the, the, the 12 to 14 hours a day that any business is going to require. <music>